What's up, guys? Welcome to episode 152 of Nintendo Power Block. I'm one of your hosts, Corey Deering, and alongside me, as always, is that retro code, Eddie V. Yeah, this is the real crossfade episode. Oh. Yes. Hello, everybody. Uh, also joining us, the host of Nerds Gone Platinum, Nerds Gone Rogue's PlayStation podcast, Jason Marshall. What's up, guys? I have to point down because we're using Google Hangouts because Skype is stupid, just like I say before every episode. So, Also, Google Hangouts is also stupid, but it's the better of the two stupids. So, It's, it's been on this best behavior. So, uh, Ed might sound like a robot halfway through the episode, so... Just, just warn everybody now. Uh, but today we're going to talk about the Nindy Showcase that just happened this week. Uh, pretty pretty big and exciting news coming out from there. Uh, that's pretty much going to be the basis of the show today. Also, we're going to name the winner of our Yoshi's Crafted World winner. Uh, we, got, we have about 20 entries to that, so uh, it's going to be interesting. Of course, a uh, friend of show, Deshaun Malone, entered five seconds before we started the show, so... Wanna say way to, way to go, Deshaun? What a, what a guy! <laughs> Although his his response was pretty uh, it was a pretty great memory. I'm not gonna lie. Getting a getting a Super Nintendo with the Mario All Stars plus World Kart and Yoshi's Island in one go. It's a just saying that's a lot. That was of Mario. a rare Super Nintendo to find. Yeah, well, I mean, I ha- I mean, I have that cart somewhere, in my parents' basement. Somewhere, maybe. I don't know. It's there. So, uh, yeah, that's 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 basically it. We're not going to do any housekeeping today. Kind of nice and tight. So uh, we're gonna we're gonna talk about what we've been playing, Jason. Since this is uh, a rare visit from you on the show, we're gonna start with you. What do, what do, what are you playing? I guess we'll start with the Nintendo stuff. I mean, you can if you want. You don't have to. Well, I've been playing a little more Diablo 3. Um, you said Nintendo stuff. On Switch. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Let me finish. I'm yes. <laughs> um, trying to finish out some of the seasonal stuff now that they extended it to May. Uh, playing Super Mario 3 on Nintendo, the online. Going nice. back and playing through all those. I've uh, been playing a lot of The Messenger on PS4. That's a good one. It's yes. a good game. Yeah. I'm really liking it. How far are you? I just beat the um the mess the old messenger. Ah. I, I like the know. shop. I don't know how far that is. I only played like it's twenty minutes fourth, of it. Oh, it's like the fourth <laughs> boss. <laughs> I think it's nice. the fourth yeah, boss. That's I think it's I think it's before you uh about to go into the sixteen bit. Like you about to change. Okay. Yeah, the boss before was the this the golem. That like Yeah. I like the shopkeeper. He's funny. <laughs> he like talks yeah. shit. And then you're like, what? He goes, nothing. Just kidding. Go on. <laughs> it's like he gives don't, you a wingsuit and he Don't go in the closet. <laughs> oh that was I did that and I got the trophy where it's like, don't go in it. Don't touch it. I told you not to. Don't stop it. Stop. I'm going to bore you. And, and then he goes, I'm not going to let you skip the dialogue. And you're like pushing X. You're like, what the? F-? <laughs> 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 it's like, wow, you really went there. Oh, man. Uh, Here's a I... wing suit. For what? Don't worry about it. <laughs> um, And some of uh, the division, too. I, I hear that's good. I mean, I've, I've been playing it, too. But... but I, Oddly, Messenger's been more of my, uh, I don't know, I'm more attracted to the Messenger. Yo, right yeah. I feel, I mean, like, as, as good as The Division is, I just feel like I've played it before. <laughs> like, that's, I, I like it. I just, every time I turn it on, I'm like, I've played this before. Like, <laughs> I think that's what it is. It's, I have no complaints about it other than, you, you're right. It's like, this is... It's more of the same. It's good, but it's like, yeah, eh, there's nothing really. It's just, it's just more division. Like I, I, like I like that. It, I literally have no complaints about it except, like, like you said, it's just more. And like, I don't know if I really want that right now, even though I was really excited to play it. Maybe if I push through more to 
get towards Endgame. Yeah. But mm-hmm. the leveling, no complaints about it. It's just, it's more of the same. Yeah. Yeah. And, and like, I I like the, the turret and the, I like the drone. Uh, I, I like the stuff that I've unlocked. I'm trying to get to the point where I can at least join the clan. Uh, but, but yeah, I just, I've been more attracted to like, like I just, I just beat Gris on switch and that was a, that was that game. Like there's parts of that game where I'm like, man, this is really fantastic. And other parts where I'm just like, man, this is, this is dragging a little bit. Like there's a couple points Mm -hmm. in the game where I thought I was like, where I was thought I was finished. And then that just spit me out at another section. I'm like, Oh man, I gotta, I gotta do more. But like, that payoff at the end, like the ending is just so fantastic. If you haven't watched the end of, of Gris, you should YouTube it at least if you're not going to play it. It's really, it's just like, man, but I feel like if you, if you don't play it, the end doesn't pay off for you <laughs> either. So is that your and, and that's first why completion I, of the NX challenge. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yep. Yeah, it sure is. <laughs> uh, Hey man. I oh mean, yeah. So you got two points. I did two points. I'm so, uh, when does Diablo, when's that considered finished, according to the rules? Probably a- after you beat the story mode. Okay. Uh, and yeah. then, like, whatever else you decide to do, because, like, I don't know, Ed changed the point system, and I didn't go and read the new rules of the system. <laughs> so, I mean, I, 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 as long as you finish this, because I think it's just the main campaign in Diablo. Uh, so if you finish the story mode, you get three points because third party is three point game. It's a three point once you finish the story mode. Um, I haven't. I have two seventies just through seasonal play. I haven't even done the story. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't, oh, they, wow. don't they? Don't they have uh, what the the free pay mode like d- like unlocked right from the start? Yeah, for Switch. So yeah, because I assume mm-hmm. they they probably just assumed a lot of people were double dipping, like they've played it before. So. I, well, I have three platinums in Diablo three, so I figured I'm just gonna skip the story this time around. Dang, how the heck do you get that? <laughs> PS three and PS four. Uh huh. Diablo three and Reaper were two different Where's games. The, uh... Oh, two okay. Cool, 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 cool. Yeah, and some more nice. And I've been playing more uh, PSVR. Yeah, yeah. Since 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 Switch is since Switch is kind of technically getting some VR contraption. I'm not I, comfortable with that. What, the cardboard? I, I'm leery about putting my Switch up in the air like that. I, I know. I feel like if I don't hook it up right... I know. I mean, like, uh, I, I knew they were going to do that. As soon as Labo was announced, I was like, Ed, what do you bet Nintendo does some sort of Labo VR? Remember when we had that discussion last April, Ed? <laughs> I was like, I bet one of these switches yeah. is going to be some sort of VR unit because Nintendo doesn't want to do VR like a real VR unit, but the Switch is perfect for that sort of cardboard VR because you can take the screen out and use the Joy-Cons as motion controls, and they did it. It feels like um, Samsung's VR where you put the phone in the headset. You're putting yeah. your but at least that's a plastic headset that you that the phone clips into. <laughs> this is just like a cardboard sleeve. It's like cardboard. a it's like a yeah. it's like you're sliding a hot pocket into its little heat tray when you before <laughs> you put it in the microwave and you hope it doesn't explode when you take it out. I, right. I, could, I could already picture some eight year old gets the VR kit. Parents leave the room, puts it in, all of a sudden I know. Oh, I can't man. see anything. Man, oh man, what a what a! It's gonna be interesting to see how it doesn't break. Also, like sidebar, nothing to do with VR or anything. I'm looking at this advertisement for Roller Coaster Tycoon Adventures for Switch, and let me tell you, this advertisement is not the game that's running on Nintendo Switch. <laughs> <laughs> this looks way nicer. Uh, it's got the trees have shadows <laughs> and the people are moving. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, look, I'm all about Roller Coaster Tycoon, but this this uh, Roller Coaster Tycoon Adventures for Nintendo Switch, it clearly says Nintendo Switch is, is not the game running on Nintendo Switch. This has to be the PC version. <laughs> it's just, this is not it. I played this game for like 20 right. hours. This is not it. <laughs> I, I say give Roller Coaster Tycoon 3 or 4 and stick with that on PC. 
Yeah. I mean, I have P uh, Roller Coaster Tycoon 1. It's fine. It's fine. It's perfectly serviceable when Matt and everybody else talk about music. I just throw it on and <laughs> wait till they say my name and I'll be like, what? <laughs> oh, right. Okay. But uh, yeah, that VR, I don't I don't know if I trust it. So I, I knew they were going to do it, though. But what are you playing? On, what are you what are you playing on PSVR? Uh, Doom, Beat Saber. And uh, Borderlands. Beat Saber is a hell yeah. Of they said that Doom is how how is oh, yeah. how's how's Borderlands on it? It's fun. Uh, the teleport was weird, but you could turn it off. Uh, you could walk normally. Um, at first, it was strange. Like you turn left, you, if you don't remember to look, it mm -hmm. like kind of auto corrects for you. But once you get the hang of it, it's. I mean, it's. It's Borderlands. Yeah. You just get to watch Claptrap be an ass and right in front of you. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's uh I mean it's disappointing there's no DLC. Oh I mean, there's none of the DLC is in there? Yeah. I mean oh. the co op part sucks not having it, but I could deal with that. But it's weird that there's no DLC. Hmm. Mm. Yeah, that's weird. I mean the game's long enough. I mean, you probably get 10, 12 hours out of it. Yeah. Which isn't bad. Yeah. Okay. Speaking of Borderlands, I, I want to hear, I want to hear the music of Beast Saber. Uh, I don't like the music actually. I'm having oh, a blast really? game. I hate techno music. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! I don't. I haven't heard no. any of the music for Beat Saber. All I heard is that it's like really fun to play. And yeah, you can make it a workout. Yeah. I was like dripping. My wife yeah. was like, "What the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> What's wrong with you? Shut up! I'm playing Beat Saber. You wanted me to get <sighs> exercise. Here you go. All right. No, it's yeah. a lot of fun though. Um, I doubt I'll platinum it. Why not? Oh no, that thing looks like it's it's a lot. It's Why like, not? You have to platinum it. You have to get Do like it. a perfect on fifteen levels on expert. Oh. It's like it's like the like guitar hero of platinums. Yeah, I'm good. Ooh. That sounds awful. Not gonna lie. Uh but this is coming from the guy who has one platinum, so <laughs> I'm working on my second, I promise. Assassin's Creed. It, I I'm, might I'm, get it in October, but it's coming. I promise. Uh. <laughs> so Assassin's Creed Odyssey for twenty bucks on New Egg today. Yeah, it's been on sale the last oh, like, nice. few weeks everywhere. I, it was twenty bucks at Best Buy a couple weeks ago. I think it was twenty five on Amazon last week. It's been it's been on sale. I think it's mm -hmm. because like they're prepping their really big DLC soon. Their Atlantis expansion. So, mm -hmm. but yeah, uh, is that is that all you've been playing, Jason? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, Ed, what are you playing? Okay, so uh, finished Final Fantasy twelve on our PS4. Um, that, that's a, I just that's need, a great game. To get that out the, the way. Coming to Switch, yeah, in really good. What, a month, I think. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, just like you guys, I like I like the division too. I'm, I'm feeling it. Uh, you know, after being done with Devil May Cry five, I was just like, okay, now I can play the division two, and then I play Hook on Switch. Mm -hmm. the, Game Corey talked about for a dollar ninety nine. It's the moment it's, I started well, it's the, the best level. It's the best two dollars I think I've ever spent in my life. <laughs> it's I, so good, dude. I played thing for. I played that game for two and a half hours, and I was just like, "Oh, I'm supposed to be playing the Division Two right now." I got. I went from level one to like level forty three, and I couldn't stop playing at all. This game. I, I think I'm just gonna put it in my game of the year nomination. Yeah, it's like on my list. I didn't at least think for now. Yeah. So what hook is is that uh, it's these it's these straight lines in these hooks, and you got to try to find out which one they're connected to uh, on this dot. Hit that dot and then unlocks it. Um, if it's crossover, you got to get the top part off. Uh, off before you get the bottom part um if you don't get it correct it'll make like you're trying to open up 
a closed door. Like you shake it like a trunk style. It's like you're shaking it, but it won't unlock. So you got to find the correct way. Uh, and like every two to five levels or something, they'll introduce something new uh, throughout of it. And it gets very easy, but then they started adding more different mechanics. And you got to work those mechanics before you can unlock stuff. And it, it, shoot, I didn't think that it would get this challenging or it would make you think but i'm just like when it made me put down harvest moon because i've been attached to that th it's done something and i'm like oh my goodness like Corey was right about this game uh so yeah hook is what i'm playing at the moment uh, still playing a little bit of Harvest Moon and uh, Fire Emblem uh, Warriors, getting ready for three houses. Because uh, just like you, Corey, like, I literally pre-ordered the collection off of Amazon, so I can't wait for that. Um, Try Assassin's Creed Odyssey on PlayStation. Uh, didn't really get far into it. Because uh, I just I tried it for a little bit to see how it is. And... I think I'm going to get sucked in. It, it really controls good. I like the way that it controls. It feels something about it makes it feel smoother than uh, Origins. Yeah. Like, and yeah. I think it's probably the controls. You know, well, they, oh, ahead, they, they improve the movement a little bit. It, it feels a little bit faster. The combat's a little bit mm -hmm. more responsive. And like when you're using daggers and swords and stuff, it like, it really uh, just makes it just, everything just feels smoother. And I, I, I think they really did a good job of flushing that out. Uh, also like the mm. climbing feels smoother <laughs> than, than origins. Uh, yeah. Uh, it really feels like they took a page from uh, breath of the wild and they really do let you climb anything. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's really funny. The dialogue so. that comes out too, when you're climbing a big Greek statue and their dong is just kind of hanging there and you're climbing on it. <laughs> <laughs> got seen pictures of that it's really funny uh <laughs> yeah uh. so uh yeah um i'm so that's pretty much what i have having uh, i've been playing um haven't really like just trying to focus on the division two really to get through that and i i'm thinking about it and i know i need to jump into pray uh and i really need to jump back into uh kills on shadowfall um, I, I bought it and I didn't get past like maybe the first two levels. And I'm just like, I know this is an early PlayStation 4 release launch game, but I really want to play all the way through because I really enjoy Killzone 3. I think that's out of the Killzone series. I think that's probably the best one that I enjoy. Um, isn't, it isn't, the rumor, isn't the rumor right now that they're making a sequel to that? Right now, mm -hmm. Gorilla kind of staffed up to make two teams, and one of them is going to make a kill zone sequel or whatever. Yep. Which I think I th I think Shadowfall was kind of underrated, especially since it was like a launch title. But I don't know. I, fe well, I feel was, like uh... I just feel like it came out at the wrong time because it came out with what Battlefield, what four. I think and Call of Duty and there's there's just a lot of shooting a lot of shooting going on <laughs> uh, around the time that well, Killzone came out. And, and I don't know if you're gonna agree with me, but on this, Jason, but I know when PlayStation Four came out, a lot of the talk was Brazil Gun. Like everybody just kept talking about that on PlayStation Four. That's because like Killzone was just like. Well, yeah, uh, but it was just like everybody was talking about Rezo Gun, and then Kills on Shadowfall was just like the one of the one must have games for the system at launch. So yeah. I don't know, I don't know if there was anything else at that time. I wonder if um if they do announce a Kill Zone, it gets more hype because of Horizon Zero Dawn. Yeah. Uh, or I wonder yeah. if people are like going to be mad because they wanted Horizon Two and they got Killzone. <laughs> you know, like I—I I mean, I know that we know that her Gorilla has two teams, but some people don't really understand that sometimes. <laughs> I, you're at you're at well, I didn't. PS4 owner probably has no idea who probably couldn't even if they said Gorilla was developing a game probably yeah. wouldn't even connect the two. That's also true. 
So no, I didn't even know they had two teams to like Jason to you. Jason told me that they had to because I just always thought they were one team because they were since well, they, they announced they are, that they was working on right team. They were one team and they, they just hired a ton of people. Like I think their staff do- almost doubled in size. Okay. So they could have two teams. So we're definitely with them selling like 10 million copies. Yeah. Man, what a Bravo to them, man. New IP selling 10 million copies. So that's impressive. That means that means what? One ninth of PlayStation owners own Horizon. It's impressive. One out of every nine PlayStation owners owns that game. That's impressive. Mm, yeah. And it's down to like fifteen dollars. I know. It's on sale all the time. <laughs> all the time. If you and that like, includes it's, the it's, DLC. I know. Yeah. Which I need to get back to. I need to finish that no, DLC. Don't worry, Moose hasn't played the Frozen Worlds yet either. Well, I've I started it. Dude, I I start uh, I started it and then well, yeah, I, I and then I think I started trying to play God of War at some point and I don't know. I I just missed it. So I'm like I, halfway through my I mean, I, 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 playthrough. Are you trying to get all like the hundred percent trophies? Uh, of course. There's two more trophies left. I have to. Yeah. Can you do ultra hard on I, New uh, Game Plus? Got it, like, yes. Uh, the DLC for seven dollars. I was just like, okay, I can't wait to jump in, but I gotta finish platinum the original game. Oops. I mean they really like kind of throw you in on that game though, or in that DLC because like the first thing you fight is like a giant poison bear. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Ooh. so all the weapons I have from the DLC, I have now at the beginning of the game on Ultra Hard. Oh, nice. All right. All for New Game Plus. Uh-huh. Nice. Yeah, new Game Plus. Nice. What a nice feature. Man, if I didn't have like 3,000 games to play, I probably would have played through Horizon again by now. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> I tallied all my PS4 games. I have 620. Mm-hmm. 620? Dang. Jeez. You know that you know if you go to your library, it just tells you how many games you own. Yeah, I know. No, but I had to go through and figure out what Jeff what was Jeff's, what with VR and Oh, okay, I got it. I got gotcha. you. Oh. I see what you're saying now. Because you guys all game share. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I see. Six hundred twenty. I see. I, I see what you're saying now. I wonder how, how much you actually own just by yourself. No, that's what I without game share. I, that's what I owned. Jeff, the benefit. Oh, personally, Jeff, just... yeah. Jeff benefits from this game share more. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I game share. Most anything. of your connection is probably like any game. Yeah, a lot of and a lot of it's. When did I buy this? <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> not, not so much. Why did I buy this? It's when. I mean, to be <laughs> to, to be honest with you, probably between Xbox and PlayStation, like those two libraries, I pr- I probably own close to that. To be honest with you, and like since you don't really own right. it, since you don't own an Xbox, like and yeah, yeah my only Microsoft game was Gears of War four. Yeah, because it was four dollars. Yeah, that was, that's a Dang. that's a that's a great four dollars <laughs> though. Yeah. It's a great four dollars though. The game's good. Uh, although the yes. controls feel very archaic, and I, it's especially noticeable now since we started playing the division again. <laughs> but uh, oh, have we uh, talked about that? Go watch Arsenal X last week, everybody. Yeah, last week's Arsenal X. We talked a lot about controls and Halo and gears. And man, I can't wait for Halo Infinite though. That's gonna be a good one. Uh, but I'm gonna. I, Ed, is that all you've been playing? Sorry. Yeah, that's off. all I've been playing. Okay. No, no, that, that's all I've been playing. Okay, so uh, I finished the first game, the NX Challenge. I know it's mid-March, and I'm very slow at this, but that's an achievement for me. I finished I finished Gris. It's, uh, if you guys didn't hear me talk about it last week, it's just kind of like this uh, kind of... It's an indie game where everything's kind of hand-drawn and has this watercolor look to it with very kind of uh, heavy... I would say ink line drawings. And uh, the whole point of the game is you return, you're returning color to the world and you're kind of avoiding this black mass that can kind of, at one point it turns into a bird that chases you. At one point it turns into an eel when you get to the underwater uh, levels and stuff. And then they like, 
playing through it, I was kind of like, man, this game kind of is kind of dragging a little bit. Like there's some points where like the, the puzzles and stuff are fantastic and other points where I'm just like, this, I feel like this game is taking a little bit too long. Like, I feel like it's overstaying. It's welcome. And, and then every time I thought I was getting close to the end, it would spit me out at another point where I would have to find more of those uh, orbs and stuff. And I was like, man, I don't, I don't know if I'm just like, not I like I would play this game in, in small chunks. And I was just like, man, I don't know if I'm like missing something. Cause everybody said this game is like two or three hours. And I know I've been playing it way longer than that. And so, but like I got to the end and I was making my way through the end and what a, a that the end of this game, it, it had a really big payoff and it was awesome. I, I really thought the ending was uh, a really, really awesome payoff. And uh, I, I really think a lot of people should, should play Gris. It's uh it's, it's fantastic. And the, in the screenshots I got, like just looking at him, like you could, you could blow them up and frame them and people would just think it's a piece of art. Like it's just, it's that, that pretty and well done. Um, so I've been, I finished that and uh, time to move on to other games, but I've, I've also been playing hook. Like Ed said, it's the best dollar 99 I think I've ever spent in my life. Hmm. Uh, actually, I think I only spent like a dollar 14 on it because I had gold coins from something else. Uh, that oh, I nice. Spend. <laughs> so uh, I think I'm on like, I'm close to like puzzle 50. Uh, I don't really know exactly what puzzle I'm on, but uh, once once they start getting those like sensors in there where you have to figure out which sensor goes to which uh, rod, yeah. and hook, like that's when it starts getting really challenging. Uh, and uh, then they then they have those little circles where you kind of can change the paths of the wiring. And you're like, man, how do I turn this to make this fit here? The one thing, the, my only complaint about Hook is that if you if you mess something up, they make you restart the whole puzzle. Which I I I wish they wouldn't do that. I wish you could just be like, oh, whoops, because like sometimes I I hit the button by mistake because it's touch controls, right? Yeah. And like sometimes like my fat fingers hit another button. And it's like, oh, whoops, that was wrong. And uh, it makes you restart the whole puzzle. And it's just like, man, I don't feel like doing all that again just to get to this point. So I, I wish they would fix that. But other than that, it's a really, really fun puzzle game. Uh, like I said, some of the best $2 I've ever spent. <laughs> I don't know if it's on other platforms, but uh, it's called Hook. Look it up on Switch. It's on yeah, I think it's only on Switch. It might be on PC. It's on PC because uh, Matt PC. Phillips ended up buying it, I think. So, okay. uh, but I've been playing that. I played a little bit more of New Super Mario Brothers U. I usually just play like one or two levels at a time, and I'm like, nah, I'm good. Uh, Ape out Tetris 99. Really, man, Tetris 99 is super addicting, especially when you like almost get that win. Man, dude, I've come in second place like 30 times. I can't I can't get the win. Battle Royale just hates me. All Battle Royale. Doesn't matter what it is. Doesn't matter if you're <laughs> shooting somebody, if you're dropping blocks. It just doesn't matter. I'm just you're done. I'm done. Uh and uh I've been playing more Wargroove. Uh that game that game they fixed yeah. a lot of the issues. I think I talked about it a little bit last week, but uh they updated the checkpointing system where uh, if you mess something up, you can kind of revert back and 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 go through some things. Uh, they speed up enemy turns, which I know a lot of people were kind of complaining about. Uh, a lot of the tutorial stuff is uh, they simplified a lot of it, and uh, they they made a lot of it easier to read and and you know making sure you can read what counters what easier and everything, so you don't have to pull it up through menus. You just kind of hover over the units and it brings it up right there, which is really nice. Uh, so that, that game is really fun. It's, it's scratching that fire emblem match a little bit, but like, I really don't want to burn myself out because when three houses comes out, I'm just going to be like, all, I'm, I'm just going to be done. <laughs> uh, you mm -hmm. guys are going to lose me. Jason, you're going to have to host, uh, this show too. When okay. fire emblem comes out. So when's it come out? July. Wait. <laughs> July. <laughs> oh, wait, you have a baby. On, no, that's when I'll be on leave. Yeah, you have a baby. Never mind. Uh, the baby can help me. 
Yeah, the baby can host. <laughs> uh, uh, right, I think, Riley and the baby show. Yeah. yeah. Kids, kids, Nintendo kids block. Nice. Nailed it. Nailed uh, it. Aria, Aria beat, almost beat level one of Super Mario Brothers. Oh, yeah? The first one. Yeah, we're getting oh. there. Nice. Nice. Starting them with the classics. Nice. Nice. I'm nice. uh my kid just puts everything in her mouth, so we aren't we aren't stomping on any Goombas anytime soon. And it's like, oh what's that? Uh phone? Mouth. <laughs> what's that? Uh remote? <laughs> mouth. Oh nah. <laughs> this doesn't look like food. I bet it goes in my mouth. <laughs> so <laughs> Uh, that's kind of all I've been playing on Switch. I did dive a little bit back into Fire Emblem uh, Shadows of Valencia, but man, just mm-hmm. that 3DS screen, man. It's just... It's, I, I think it's time to retire. Switch has ruined us. I know. It's time to retire the 3DS. I try, like, every couple months I try to go back because I want to play I want to play the, the Mario and Luigi games and I want to play Fire mm-hmm. Emblem, but that screen man just 240p man that's not even a resolution that's like a that's like a cholesterol reading or something <laughs> it's like day uh, it's you know it's not shady even, remarks today <laughs> it's not even the resolution for me i'll pick it up i'll play 30 seconds in i accidentally hit the 3d button and then i'm like this is why i stopped playing it yeah oh <laughs> I mean, mine's like sitting right here. It's like charged and ready, but when every time I open it, I'm like, it's like, like even on the 2DS, like the screen is mm. not as colorful as the 3DS. So like everything kind of looks washed out a little bit. And I'm just like, man, I'm going back to Switch. I'm going to play some of these cool indie games. Uh, and like, I want to play, I want to play the Box Boy games again too, because uh, Box Boy and Box Girls coming out in, uh, yeah. in real soon. So. Uh, but it's not happening, guys. It's not happening. I did play a little bit of Yoshi's Woolly World on Wii U, though, because Crafted World comes out next week, and I'm just like, I have a little itch to play Yoshi, but also I realize the Wii U gamepad is large and obnoxious to hold, especially because, again, the Switch has ruined everything about previous Nintendo consoles. So uh, I'm just saying, look at this thing. Look at this thing. This thing is like... I mean, I feel like I feel like I could go to Toys R Us and like find a VTech something for my kid that's better suited to drop. <laughs> oh, bleach. Oh, goodness. I have parents who did that and oh, rip, rip Toys R Us. You hardly knew ye. you got to go to Canada now to find one. So like I told Jason, I was just like, I wish I would have known you then when I was like working at toys. I would have sent you all these pop toys that you was missing. <laughs> uh, gonna get rid of pop Canada, toys. Did you hear did she Bethesda tweeted out to look forward to E3? Keep refreshing that Walmart Canada page. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh man. So, speaking of Bethesda, they're supposedly leading off with Doom Eternal and Wolfenstein, which I can't wait. Can't wait for those games. For Google Stadia. Oh yeah, (laughs) well, ever. Oh man, I dude. Okay, I know it doesn't directly tie into Nintendo stuff, but the Stadia is like that. That whole thing fascinates me, and I know it's not going to like replace anything that we use, but I. I still want. I still want to try it. I still want to see if it's going to work. That controller looks nice. I will give them that. So, like I said, I'm sitting on the sideline for this one. I find it interesting, but I, there's just something about it. That's what if it was called the Nintendo Stadia? Would you pick it up? Nope. I don't believe you. I was in the Project Stream beta. No, I'm good. <coughs> yeah. All right. Well, other than that, I've been I've been playing Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Uh, it's like it's a great game. I'm like 20 hours in. I'm still in the third area, so I just I refuse to move on until all those question marks are are picked up. So, uh, 
Oh, which uh, Corey, I forgot to tell you, I did pick up Halo Reach. Uh, no, uh, ODST. I'm sorry. Oh, on for the Master Chief Collection. Chief Collection, yeah. Nice, nice. So that's a fantastic game as well. Yeah. yeah, they don't have Reach. Reach is still twenty bucks. I'm like, oh heck no. Just wait, just wait. Three hundred and sixty price. It'll be there. It'll be there for five bucks as soon as it launches. Okay. Just wait. Just wait, Ed. Do not buy Reach twice. I know you like to buy a lot of games twice. Do not buy Reach twice. I will slap you. About? I like to buy games. I like to buy games three times. I know. <sighs> I know. Uh, but anyways, we're gonna we're gonna talk about this uh, Nindies Direct. We're gonna get into this conversation here. Uh, Ed, you said you you have notes. Uh, but before we before we yes. yeah, I mean, what. What's I have notes on notes on what the the Nindy showcase. Oh, am I, I the only prepared. one? That, am I, I the only one prepared? I do not have notes. You you tell me what we were discussing, so I took notes. I do not have notes. Right. I have the Nintendo Life page open. God, I'm not even <laughs> on the show when I took notes. Well, you're a better guest than I am. <laughs> this is this is why Nerds Gone Platinum is our most successful show. <laughs> uh man so ed you kind of you want to run down the games kind of and we'll kind of talk about each one real quick uh yes uh so they opened it up with cuphead coming to switch this is my studio mm. mdhr who called that uh, last year too mm. I, <laughs> I have to admit that opening in the black and white with the guy drinking yeah coffee. Mm-hmm. well i started watching it and i was like well i already knew cuphead was like announced and whatever but i i watched it the other night and i was like what is this guy doing like what is happening here and i didn't even realize it was a commercial for like the starting thing for cuphead until he was like pouring milk into the mug and like the milk came out and they ended up making cuphead and mug man i was like oh right you want to know what's funny though i was getting so much fallout vibes from this and I think it was just like the way that the audio was. I'm just like, this could have been something fit. Well, they Fallout. they just did it for like like a commercial from like the 30s and 40s and 50s. Yeah. Like that's what it kind of reminded me of. But Fallout is styled in that way. Yeah. In a sense. Yeah. So that's not just like, oh, are, is this Fallout? It like I, it felt like very like I'm like Fallout Four for Switch as an indie yeah. game. No, that's not possible. <laughs> uh. <laughs> That would be interesting. <laughs> but, well, yeah. I mean, the way Nintendo showed some stuff off this in this direct, don't be surprised if you see other indies working on Nintendo titles. <laughs> uh, but also, just just a confirmation that uh, the the Cuphead is releasing on April eighteenth for Switch, and then a physical copy will arrive sometime after because they want to make sure the DLC is on the cartridge. Yeah. So, so good you, on good on them. Good on Microsoft and uh, Studio MDHR for for. Yeah. So you guys can pre-purchase it now. Uh, and right. I, I would you know what I put on on my Twitter page? I'm like, look, Studio MD, MDHR and Microsoft do not get offended if you do not make a lot of sales digitally because everybody wants this game on physical cartridge. No, like, everybody's gonna double dip. People are going to double dip. People are going to want to play it when it comes mm-hmm. out, and then they'll buy the physical copy and leave it sealed, like I do. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that that's true. Uh, I know I'm I'm getting it physical, so I'm and the plus since I already own it on one, I was just like I don't want to buy it digitally and then go back and buy it physically. It, if the price is right, though, uh, yeah, I might have to do it. Uh, but yeah, well, well, um, how much is it digitally? Twenty bucks? I think so. I didn't, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't take a look yet. Um, you can play it two player on one Switch. That's what it seems to be. Um, and we don't know anything else between online yet, so we don't know if it's going to or offer cross play, and we don't know if it's going to be on like local online. But for right now, it just seems that you, you two players can play on the Switch with the Joy Cons. Yeah, or, and I'm assuming Pro controllers also. Yeah, let's see. Cuphead is going to be nineteen ninety nine. 
I think it's so funny. It, okay, so version of Price when it first came. I out. think it's so funny that it, like it says developer MD uh, Studio MDHR, but then it says published by Microsoft <laughs> right on the store page. <laughs> uh, but I mean, it is uh, true because oh, Microsoft I, did I, publish it. I, I'm aware. It's just like we're starting into that kind of weird space where Microsoft is starting to move and starting to make their moves. You know, starting to publish games on other platforms. So. <laughs> And this one will have Xbox Live achieve, achievements. I kind of saw in the clip how they all popped up mm-hmm. uh, when they was doing the playthrough at GDC. Uh, and it's kind of cool on how they did it. I'm like, oh, that's that's nice. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I I played a little bit of Cuphead. I think we did it for a uh, pot and play uh, a mm-hmm. couple seasons ago. and uh, Last season. Yeah. And so, you know, it's it. It's fun. I'm terrible at these games, so I just I really like because growing up a, a Disney kid, I watched a lot of these old Disney cartoons when I was gr- growing up, and mm-hmm. like this totally reminds me of those. So, uh, can't I can't wait to play it I, again on Switch. So, uh, Jason, I know you being a PlayStation person, this is probably going to be your first jump into this game. I actually have it for PC. Oh, right, because they put it on what they did put it on. They ended up put it on Steam. Yeah, so. but um, I may get it, but only when it goes physical, because I don't buy digital Nintendo for this gen. Yeah, I've stuck to it. I waited out Golf Story. I finally got that physical. So I'll wait. <sighs> I'll wait for the physical on this. Ed, do you want Golf Story physically? Because my Best Buy has like forty of them, just sitting there. Yeah, I do. I their don't. whole their whole limited run section is like just full. Feel. It's uh it's Super Meat Boy, Golf Story, and Ukulele right now, and there's a whole end cap just full of them. Yeah, I'll take uh I'll take golf story. <laughs> yes. Uh yeah, that game is so good. Uh, no, but I'm I'm excited. I I yeah, own it on PC, but I don't like playing on my PC. Yeah. So PC definitely gaming. would love to yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, before we move on, Jason, did you play with your? Is you could use your PlayStation Four controller, right, on PC? I actually use a three hundred and sixty controller. Oh, okay. Because like it's you could just plug it right in. You don't have yeah. to configure anything. Yeah. Okay. So, well, uh, the next game they showed was Overland. This is a squad-focused turn-based strategy. Um, it's kind of the maps, the levels, and characters are randomly generated, so after you die, you'll get a different character. Um, this is by Fiji. This was going to be available this fall. So what it is, is it takes place like in a kind of like apocalyptic uh, up- land, and you have to you know, kind of um, survive in it and help uh, help um, other players or other characters that you want. Um, kind of looks like Final Fantasy Tactics, like that diagonal style uh strategy game um but it looks really cool it look, looks very interesting not my not my kind of game but it's it's a good it's a nice start yeah i have, I, I mean i don't know i probably will skip it but it has a really cool art style i really like the art style that they are using in this game so. it, it re, i think this is the one game that reminded me of like oxen free for some reason I didn't play Oxen Free, so I don't really, I don't even know what that game looks like, to be honest with you. <laughs> kind of reminded me of the uh, the Go games, Hitman, Lara oh, Croft, yeah. the way the yeah. movement and the yeah, and it's like not the completely top down. It's like yeah, it's like isometric yeah. with like a really kind of sharp polygonal look. Yeah, it's cool though. So yeah. So, uh, the next game they show was My Friend Pedro. Uh, this is going to be a console exclusive to Switch. Um, it's a 2D squad, uh, side scoring shooter uh, by Digital Devolver. Uh, uh, Devolver. So, what it is is that you're uh, you can slow down time and do like almost ballet moves, like jump around, flip, uh, choreograph where you are shooting a pan and the bullet goes in different directions to hit enemies. Uh, it's coming out this June. Uh, I I seen previews of this, but I didn't know that it was coming to Switch. I think it was just only on for PC at the time, but this going to be a console exclusive. Um, a lot of people are excited to play this game. Yeah, I 
think it looks cool. I remember when it got announced, a lot of people were calling it Indie Deadpool because they announced it right around the time that Deadpool 2 was coming out. Mm-hmm. And like just the I guess there's a lot of fourth wall breaking and kind of like just that kind of humor in it. So I think it looks cool, though. And my friend Pedro is a talking banana. Look yeah, at the best too. part. Pedro's a talking banana. Who doesn't like a good banana? I eat two every day. That's probably why I poop a lot. I want a banana milkshake. That escalated quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Nintendo Power Block. <laughs> oh, man. I just um, I enjoy bananas. I can't help it. Um, any thoughts, Jason, about it? I, I like it. I kinda I'm jealous. But unless it's physical on Switch, I'm not getting it. But it'll I'll hold it'll out. come to PlayStation at some point. Yeah, You'll get that platinum and yeah, yeah. This is digital Devolver, so I think Devolver they'll... Digital, Devolver Digital. Oh, Devolver! Di- I put digital Devolver. Goodness, uh, Devolver Digital. Sorry about that. I Ed, you're away. fired. Poor shame. Poor shame. Ed, you're fired. Uh, well, I'll be rehired by next week. Uh, <laughs> uh, moving on, uh, Neo Cap. This is an emotional survival <laughs> game. Uh, your, your, it takes place in the cab, and what you'll do is you'll pick passengers, manage money, and sustain po- uh, positive reactions. Uh, I think this is a debut game from Fellow Traveler, and it'll be out this summer. And it kind of takes place where you are in a city, and you're the only human uh working in a taxi cab uh because everything else is automatic or automated with robots um and so and there's this corporation or this organization looking for one of your friends and uh you got to kind of like protect her um for it um and it looks really cool you pick up passengers and you know help them solve their stories and go around like it, it's a really nice game um the color palette screams nourish in a sense um it's, it's kind of got it's kind of got that kind of like stylized 80s feel to it almost mm-hmm. like the purples and the blues and the yellows and stuff like i don't know it this game doesn't really do anything for me to be honest with you it i mean it's it, a cool it, concept there's it's basically a, like uber driver mm-hmm. the simulator <laughs> and i'm just like, eh, <laughs> no thanks i'm good <laughs> And but there, and there's another game coming out like this. I think it's Nightland, Nightlander, or something like that. It was another Neo thing. It was in part of the uh, Nindy highlights that they show. Um, that's coming to Switch, and it's almost in that. It's it's in that kind of genre, but uh, different art styles and stuff. So, yeah. But um, Jason, any thoughts? It reminded me of that game that just came out. Um... Not art wise, but beat cop, where you basically go about your day doing uh, uh, as a cop, and this you go about your day like you're a cab driver, manage affairs, pick up people. I, I'm not interested in it though. It's yeah. I think I think I'm gonna pick it up because of the narrative. I want to see what what story it tells. Uh, but moving on from that, uh, The Red Lantern. Uh, this is uh, Timberline Studios' debut. Um, you race in a, like, kind of a dog set in this open world game. Um, it's a first-person narrative with rogue-like elements. Uh, and you have gyro controls in your handheld mode, so you can kind of move your switch around and see different areas of the world. Um, and it's going to be coming out later this year. Um I think it's something that you need to watch the trailer for if you haven't seen this, um, because like she's uh, she's talking about you know how everything came to be, and then at one point you get attacked by the bear, um, and then it goes on from there. Uh, so a lot of people are interested in this game. I don't know who is, uh, but it's something like interesting to see. It's a walking simulator on a sled. I'll pass. I'm not into it because they kill a dog at the beginning, so pass. How do you know it won't be like John Wick then? Well, I I knew that was coming in John Wick, so I kind of fast forward through it, to be honest with you. <laughs> I just got to the good part. <laughs> oh, wow. Which I just finished watching John Wick too. Really good movie. Man, John Wick, what a what a great movie. John Wick three, May. I know. 
Halle Berry's in that yeah. movie too. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. mm-hmm. Mm. I'm a fan. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, the next day show was Darkwood. This is a survival horror game. Um, <clears throat> it's kind of top down. Uh, you'll be crafting weapons, prepare traps, and you'll fortify hideouts. Um, it's procedurally generated. So every time you go into the forest or you progress, things change. Um, this is by Crunching Koalas and Acid Wizard, and it will be out this May. Um, Pass. It's, it's literally Scary. top down. Uh, this is more uh, Jesse Douglas's uh, alley. So um, I hope he buys it so we can hear it from him. <laughs> this is not for me. Yeah, it looks not like something I'm going to be playing anytime soon. <laughs> uh, it looks cool. I don't know how it could be scary, though. It's top down. You can see everything. I know. I just. Yeah. He said survival horror. I didn't really remember what game he was talking about, to be honest with you, until he said that. So I, I'm a terrible host. I did not prepare. I watched it once and I was like, meh. Oh, so, no. I'm sorry. Uh, and the only other announcement I really cared about wasn't even in the Nindy showcase. It was came out after <laughs> <laughs> the one Mutant Year Zero is coming out for Switch with the DLC included. Yeah. So. When they did that one, they, they were just confirming it, right? Uh, uh yeah, it's the okay. phys- the physical, uh, deluxe edition. It's also coming to PS4 and Xbox One. Uh, oh, great! So it was spotted on GameFly a couple days ago, and then the studio just came out and said, "Yeah, we're doing it." <laughs> Good move. Yeah. Thanks, thanks for confirming that because that game is cool. Yes. Uh, so uh, the next day show was Katana Zero. This is a 2D stylized action game. Um, you can slow down time to ricochet shots and more. Uh, one hit rewinds you back to the beginning. So if you get hit, uh, you have to start all the way from the beginning. Uh, this is kind of, uh, to me, my ideal uh, Strider meets Mr. Shifty. Uh, this was, again, from Devolver Digital. And you can pre-purchase it now. And it will be out around April 18th. Um, it's getting a lot of positive feedback that people are planning to buy this game um it looks really really cool yeah it better come yeah. physical because i really want this yeah i bet it'll come mm-hmm. physical at some point every all these indie games end up coming physical at some point speaking of any games that are coming physical mutant year zero with dlc for switch physically is 39.99 so, oh yeah awesome which is awesome because that dlc i think was like 10 or 15 dollars by itself mm. and the game was 34.99 and to get it physically on Switch for thirty nine ninety nine, it's a good deal. Yeah, June twenty fifth for that game. By the way, oh, goodness, can some people, uh, somebody <laughs> stop Nintendo <laughs> and, and all these games coming out? I know, dude. Are- there's so, dude. There's so many games coming out. So too many. There is too many. There are too many games coming out for Switch to the point where it's just like, just stop. April Stop. April is packed. You you said May was packed, dude. This summer is packed. I think even before we even hit September. Oh goodness, yeah. Uh, so next they show Rat. Uh, this is by Double Fi, um, published by Bandai Namco. It's a three D action roguelike like adventure. Uh, you can mutate and add more mutants to your uh, arsenal, and this will be coming out this summer. This, this looks game. like Borderlands One to anyone. The art style. Uh, I need to look it up. Yes, oh, it did. Yes. Right, it looked like yeah. a top-down. Oh, this an, was like an that... isometric Borderlands game almost. Yeah, 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 yeah. The uh, the commercial was funny though, where like Tim Schafer just kind of popped up behind that dude. Was, oh, this game's rad! You're ruining the surprise. <laughs> this game's rad. Yeah. But, do you hear Schaefer's speech at GDC? Uh uh-uh. uh. Uh uh. He walks out and his first line was goes, This is probably controversial, but uh fuck white supremacist. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> I was like, whoa. Why All right then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man. Yes. So yeah, it does look like Borderlands a lot, that art style. It's cool though. I I'm planning on getting it. I, I'm going to buy this one. Oh. Um, and I think this is a f- this is their first game, like original game for a Nintendo console. Yeah. So it's yeah, I'm all for it. 
So uh, next they show Creatures in the Well. This is a pinball action adventure. Uh, you play as this, uh, I guess it's a robot or, or something. Um, and uh, you're kind of like going through these dungeons because uh, the world is covered in sand and you're trying to stop this uh this black thing from i think destroying the land or something uh you have 15 weapons to choose from it is top down it has eight crafted uh eight crafted dungeons um this is my flight school and it will be out this summer um a lot of people are saying hyper light drift drifter i was just gonna say that hyper light drifter meets pinball but you know what? I don't see the Hyperlight Drifter, and I think it's because uh, the art style is very clean in this game. It's um, cleaner than Hyperlight, but I, I think the comparison was the character. What's kinda the, moves, okay? Kind of moves like the character in Hyperlight Drifter. Like, yeah, look, that, look, what, look what Yoko did. Yoko's Island Express created a new genre: pinball like, plus anything. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, mm. and it and it works. <laughs> Yeah, I it, when I seen the art style and I seen this, I'm just like, oh my goodness, this is no more heroes meet pin. And that's what I first thought was no more heroes meets pinball. Uh, the the one that came out uh for Switch, um, the little indie game. Um, that's what I was getting, but I but yeah, now you that you mentioned Hyper Life Drifter, I can see it now. Yeah. Uh, oh my gosh, why does why does Amazon keep recommending the Mega Constructs Destiny figures? when I don't want them. Sorry. Continue. I was just, I'm getting all these weird emails from Amazon with these little destiny, like the, the mega block characters. And I'm just like, Ooh. let's, let's not. Yeah. But creatures in the well is a, to me, it's a must have this summer. So nice. Blood roots. This is a top-down action game. Uh, you control a character named Mr. Wolf. Uh, what you must do is choreograph combos. Um, and this is by Paper Cult, C-U-L-T. And they'll be out this summer. Um, this looks funny. And I'm here for it. I, like, I, I'm going to buy this game. It, it looks like you got to... Like, everything in the world is a weapon. It looks so, like It looks like the reverse of Katamari. Almost. <laughs> Like where you're using the barrels to like destroy stuff instead of roll stuff up and like mm -hmm. the ladders and stuff. It just looks like you're out to destroy things. Like, I don't know. It just looks, it looks cool though. I really like the art style. Uh, I think it's got a really clean art style. So, yes. Uh, Jason, any thoughts? I'm definitely interested, but I probably will get this on PS4. Oh, okay. Uh, did they, they announce it for PlayStation 4? Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah, a lot of these are coming to a lot of the other platforms, other too. Platforms. Yeah. It's, it's Steam and consoles. Okay. Uh, so the next game is Pi. This is an open world. This game world. looks awesome. <laughs> uh, this is an open world third person action game. Uh, what you have to do to survive is scavenge, barter, harvest, craft, and sell at the market. Um, you'll visit six diverse towns and five factions of creatures. This is by Twirl Bow, and this is coming out this August. That opening, so much breath for the wild vibes for this. I know that opening scene where the the alligators were fighting those moose, yeah, army people. Like I was like, man, that looks awesome. <laughs> I want to fight some cr alligators as a moose warrior. When yes. I first looked at it, I, I definitely I was like, is that Breath of the Wild? <laughs> yeah. It re if you look quick enough, the some of the screenshots you're like, eh, I think I've seen this before. Yeah, it looks like it looks like Breath of the Wild meets Rhyme. I don't know if you played Rhyme, Jason, but it kind of looks like that too. I'm familiar enough that yeah, I can see that. Yeah. Yeah. Man, uh, I wish so they would fix that game on Switch because I really wanted to play it, and that's where I own it, and they never fixed it. It's too late now. I think well, we can move on. Yeah. Friday. Well, Tequila Works, I think, is working on PSVR stuff now. So. Yeah, it's not the first stadium. Stadium, I think. Oh, yeah. That's, yeah. Whatever. Uh, so uh, the next three games is Super Crate Box, uh, Nuclear Throne, and Ultra Bugs. All of these come from Blandvir. Uh, Super Crate Box is kind of like uh, 
uh, I guess a party kind of game. Uh, it it looks odd. Um, I know Nuclear Throne is kind of looks like a, a dual stick shooter in a sense. And then Archer Bugs uh, kind of looks like an arcade game um, where you're shooting up a lot of bugs in this one Pacific area. Um, and the more you shoot, the more points you ra- you rack up and survive. Um, I'm not interested in any of these. Yeah, I'm not really interested in any of these either. Super Crate Box is uh, free on Steam. Oh, well. Okay. <laughs> Go play it there. And if you like it. I, I, don't, I don't know, man. I don't, I don't know. I own Nuclear Throne on Vita. So I won't be rebuying it. Yeah, it looks like I don't. It looks like something. Honestly, a Nuclear Throne looks like something Moose and Matt would obsess over for like three episodes of Nerd's Gun Room. It looks like a green steam light game, and I'm like uh, a steam green light game. Sorry, I'm like Ugh. a green steam light. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> steam light. Steam light. Nice. Uh, yes. Uh, I love this new game. <laughs> this next game. Swim Sanity. I, I like the name of it. I thought that was so cool. Uh, this is a one to four co-op or versus mode game with bots. Um, uh, it, it takes all plays underwater. Um, you could use dual stick or motion aiming. Uh, it was going to have in-game chat with a, in a, a party system. There's 150 challenges across eight modes. Um, it's going to have matchmaking. Uh, you can play the game local or online. This is by Decoy Gang, and it will be out this summer. Uh, this is literally up my alley uh, for gaming. So, uh, like I said, I, I love the name of it. I was just like, Swim, Swim, Sanity. Yeah. The only thing that's weird, I wonder how much you're going to feel like you're underwater. Because it looks like just a side scroller, but like, are you yeah. really gonna feel like if they make the swim mechanics work? Otherwise, it's just like a side hope, scroller, like with that setting. I hope the swim mechanics are just Super Mario One swim mechanics with guns. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I would ask for a refund back if that happens. Nope, all sales final. Dang it. <laughs> So, uh, next game is Blaster Master Zero Two. This is by Anti Creates and Sunsoft. Um, oh my gosh! So they 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 showed this many games in this thing. Eighteen, dude. Man, um, uh, it's available now for nine ninety nine. Uh, one of the new modes will allow you to counter enemy attacks, and you can uh, if you get make uh, make it a, a, in enough time, you could connect all your counter attacks and. Uh, Defeat them quicker that way. Um, it, it looks really good. I ended up buying it, but I haven't started it yet. I mean, it looks it looks just like the first one or Blaster Master Zero mm-hmm. when it came out. So, which was you know, if you like Blaster Master, it was a good version of that. <laughs> so, I mean, this just looks. Whoa! I almost knocked my microphone over. I almost went boom. Psh! Uh, who is Sunsoft owned by, or are they just back? I have no idea. Because <laughs> shoot, I would the last like game play. I remember them making was Batman. <laughs> so exactly. <laughs> and I want the, oh goodness, I want that game to come to Nintendo Online. Good luck yeah. with that. <laughs> I, I want Turtles in Time on Nintendo Online. They're um, they're just their own. I guess they're just back. Oh, okay. Mm. Uh, did you Blaster play, uh, Master is like okay. 30 years old at this point? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I think it's 31. Uh, yep, 1988. Oh, goodness, I'm too old. Well, yeah, <laughs> enough of that. Uh, I'm I, like I said, I did pick it up, but I just haven't started yet. So I kind of got like the I got the first one and now I got the second one on uh, my Switch. Um, is it? I wonder if this is only on Nintendo. I don't know if they bought the Blaster Master to PlayStation and Xbox. No, I know they brought the first one to 3DS, but I, don't, I, I doubt they're porting another game to 3DS at this point. Okay, uh, Jason, any thoughts? Uh, uh, I still have um, Blaster Master 
the three DS one. <laughs> okay. So maybe if I play that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Maybe if I get through my backlog. I'm gonna go ahead and say that your three DS just isn't charged anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's been charging because I think I'm gonna bring it to PAX East. Ah oh, yes. Don't take only, it back in. Only because I feel like out of all my systems, the three DS is the most durable for that. I, feel I mean, more you comfortable. Could just, you could put your switch in your pocket. Just take the Joy Cons off and put it in your other pocket. Yeah, that's complicated. <laughs> Not that complicated. Just, just do it. Just do it. Do it. Yeah. Nobody else is going to be playing three DS. You're going to be standing in line playing three DS, and everybody else playing Switch. You're going to be like, you're going to just feel bad about yourself that you didn't bring your Switch. <laughs> like I, I did. I say still street pass, you know, in case you get some pizza. Ah, nobody street things. passing anymore. I, I still street pass. Uh, hey, I, I, I want to feel street like passing. I love, with the, I love Jeff to talk to you the whole time. <laughs> street passing with the other 3DSs in your house, it does not count. Oh, you know what? <laughs> I street pass most of the toys I run. <laughs> oh, that's well, how I got everybody. Street pass is, is, is thr- just as thriving as Toys R Us is these days. So. <sighs> oh, rip toys! I'm gonna do it you. again. You, you <laughs> haven't got uh, the next... that I want you to get to <laughs> Stranger Things. I right, I'm about to get to it. Uh, yeah, Stranger <laughs> Things three, the gay. Uh, this is by Netflix and Bunny no. XP. No. Uh, it's coming out July 4th. No, um, it's an isometric beat 'em up gay. No. Ass games based on TVs and movies are just as bad as movies based on games. <laughs> Fair, yeah. A lot, a lot of people are not not liking this, and I'm just like, okay, but I'm like, y'all seen this before? Just surprised that it's coming to Nintendo. And I thought, th- I think they probably thought it would be, uh, they would get a big reaction, and everybody just like you guys, just like meh, whatever. I, I so. kind of feel like everybody's kind of over Stranger Things. I don't know. I know I didn't really get into Stranger Things, but the. I just don't. I don't feel like people are are as into it as they used to be. Maybe they are. Maybe just maybe none of us just care about it. I don't know. Uh, so before I get into the last part, um, there is a Nindy sale. If you guys want to catch up on some of the great Nindy games like Firewatch, Yoko's Island Ex- uh, Express, Icono Class is fourteen ninety nine. Get that gay. Yeah, I got that free from PlayStation Plus. Yeah, that game's great. Such a good game. I, I double dipped on it. I uh, brought the physical of from limited run, but I own it on PlayStation. Like, no, you. Oh, you got the limited run. Yeah. Oh. Because when I found, yeah, when I found out it was coming to Switch, and then they was doing physical, I was just like, okay, I will buy the physical. Hyperlight uh, Drifter is coming physically too, but they're they're it's not limited run. It's the other one that does. I think it's like super rare games or whatever. Oh yeah. Is doing their physical, and I'm like, I hate this. Just release it. <laughs> so yeah, I think like, I and get it like a normal human being. <laughs> and normally, fan gamer always have a good stock with them, but they don't. They haven't did it in a while. And uh, there's another one. Uh, but yeah. Uh, but Crypt of the Necro Dancer, featuring the Legend of Zelda, combining to make. Candace of Hyrule. Uh, this is from Brush Yourself Game and Spike Chunsoft. Uh, you'll be able to control Link and Zelda, uh, and another character, uh, the main character. I don't know her name. Uh, this is an action of her name is Cadence. Oh, Cadence. Okay. Uh, I didn't know that. I never played Crypto the Deck. No, they I looked it up after. I didn't know it either. They didn't say it in the thing, and I didn't play Crypto the Necro Dancer either, but they Mm -hmm. I read. Like I wanted to know about this game because I was like, mm. if Nintendo is like officially licensing this game, like, are they going to do a physical? Because it's a Zelda game, so I want it physically. But I couldn't find anything. Yeah, so I just found out her name was Cadence. So uh, this is an action adventure rhythm game. Uh, so you have to move to the beat and like fight enemies and attack. Uh, so once you move, the enemy moves. Uh. So if you guys want to check it out, uh, this is kind of one of the biggest highlights of the show because uh, everybody was just like, we're getting two Zelda games this year. Um, yeah, that was a that was a rumor that was going around like a couple weeks ago, and it said we might get two two Zelda games this year. I'm like, 
That's a little much, don't you think? But I mean, if this is the second Zelda game, then yeah, that's awesome. Well, this is uh this is a us like they said it's a sequel to Crystal the Necro Dancer, but it was just like I think Nintendo said it's their game, but just with the Legend of Zelda characters uh-huh. in it. So it's not a typical it's not an actual Legend of Zelda game. No, but it is it is uh well as canon as Zelda can be. They said it's an official Zelda release. So oh. that's yeah. awesome. Like I look, this is the, the most interesting thing about this is like Nintendo this they're finally doing what we asked them to do during the Wii U era on, right? I think we started talking about this like probably around episode 10 when Axiom Verge started coming around and and Shovel Knight was out and really awesome. Like we wanted Nintendo to start reaching out to indie developers with their licenses and and be like, be pretty open with them and be like, "Hey, make F0, make a 2D Metroid, that kind of thing." And this I think mm-hmm. they're starting to experiment with that and this is a cool idea. You know, Crypt of the Necro Dancer is a unique kind of rhythm action game. And like, if you're going to do this with Zelda, that, that's that's one of your biggest franchises. Like, this is a big risk for them. And I, I think it's cool. I think it's cool that they're finally reaching out to any developers with their licenses. This just gives me Minish Cap vibes all. Like, yeah, the art style. The art style and stuff. Yeah, the art style is definitely very Minish Cappy. So, yeah. Man, a cool, cool idea though. I, I actually want to check out Crypt of the Necro Dancer now just to see what that game is about, so I can get ready for this. So, because it's like yeah. it's kind of like a pseudo sequel to that game as well. So, well, I thought they said it was the sequel to the game. Because, well, because it's. I mean, I don't. I mean, it might be. I don't know. I just, I just know like it takes place after that, but it's in High Rule. So I don't know if it was like a. Okay an official sequel or if it's just like a spinoff or whatever, but what a cool idea though. Yeah, man. Nintendo's really kind of, man, if you were to tell me that Nintendo was going to start doing stuff like this and like third party games and indie games, like what, three or four years ago, I would have been like, man, you're nuts. (laughs) Nintendo is so closed off, but this just shows you, man, switch is more than the name of the console. It's the way the company. So, and they talked about uh, licensing their work, their characters out. So yeah, awesome. Uh, Jason, is it is it a groove that you could dig or? No, I don't like rhythm games. I don't care what it is. <laughs> I mean, it's a, no, it's a cool idea. It's great that they're letting their characters go, so to speak, to other publisher developers, but. Nah, the game's not for me. Yeah. The cool thing too is is like okay. it's actually a game revolving around these characters instead of like remember when Rayman Legends yeah. came out and they're like, Oh, you get a Mario hat for Rayman, and that was like the extent of it. <laughs> or like when Scribble uh you could use Nintendo characters in it, but you could not do anything with them. You could just type in Yoshi and you would get Yoshi. You couldn't enter in like fat Yoshi or you know, and then mm-hmm. it wouldn't change the characteristics oh. at all. Like this seems a move in the other direction. It's it's cool. I'm I'm excited to see like now that this door is open, what else they'll do. It's not necessarily that I'm excited for this game. I'm just excited what opening this door means for other indies. You know, because like I would love if the fast RMX developer made an F Zero game. Oh, you know, just a downloadable F Zero game for thirty bucks. You know, everybody is waiting for that. Uh, if they announce it at E three, it's a done deal. It I mean, you, a, Ubisoft uh, already gave us the best Star Fox game we've gotten in like 20 years. So it's just, it showed Nintendo's got so many. The Switch has like the library is insane at this point. Yeah. There are so yeah. many games. And like, not even just the indies, but there's lengthy games. Like, if you just stuck to the main titles, you got like hundreds of hours of gameplay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if you look at uh, the big, if you look at the big three that came out in the first year, you know, Zelda, Mario, and Xenoblade, like that's like five hundred hours right there, because <laughs> Xenoblade's right. so long. And I mean, I I spent like two hundred and thirty hours in Zelda. And, but, yeah, then you had Octopath. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I mean, 
it's switch is switch is just I, this i could i if you would have told me nintendo's next system was going to be something like this i wouldn't I, man no clue uh, but no, they, they really still. pulled off because that google stadia is trying to do that where it's like seamless but yeah i don't think it's going to be as like even playstation oh when the vita oh you could it was that mlb commercial oh you yeah. could play at home and mm-hmm. then switch to your Vita, it's like it didn't work that way. But this, like, you literally could be playing on the couch, just pop the console out and continue. Like, yeah. Other yeah. than just if you have to put the Joy Cons back on, but you're playing right. There's no upload to the server, download it. Like, it's yeah, instant. Yeah. Yeah, oh, man. They really, they really made a lot of smart decisions with this system, just design wise. It's just. Uh... What a what a fantastic system this is! So great. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> just one last update. Uh, Wizards of Legend, uh, Wizards of Legend, the Sky Palace update is available for free for all platforms. So they kind of announced it a little bit after the Nintendo uh, the Nindy Direct. So if you guys have Wizards of, of Legend on Switch, um, the update is free, and um, also everybody Castle Crashers is remastered is coming to Switch along with um playstation 4 uh, and i think pc i don't know why xbox one is not getting it but i'm definitely buying that game on switch so it's not backwards compatible with xbox one yet uh it is that's uh, but why. it's not the remake wait which one is it castle crashers. castle crashers well what what uh clay entertainment did with mark of the ninja if you owned the original version on xbox 360 mm-hmm. They just upgraded your version for free. So I wonder if they'll do something similar. For the remaster? Yeah. So All I'm, I know is Moose is so excited. I know Moose is obsessed with Castle Crashers. I've never played it. I played it on PS3. I just didn't get to finish it. Uh, so I'm glad I can have this game on the go. Because I like Behemoth. I like their games. Not but they were not their last game, whatever they made, I I didn't even touch. I'm like, what the world is this craziness? The Castle <laughs> Crashers and like Alien Hominid, really great games. So uh, yeah, that was the uh Nindy Direct. Yeah, well, there you have it. Nindy Direct, it happened. Uh oh wait, we gotta announce the winner of the game. So all right, Ed. Let me let me get pull up some of these things here. I'm going to have... Hmm, do I want Ed to pick or do I want Jason to pick since he's the guest? This is what we did on, on Nerds Gone Rogue. I have all the entries, the names of the entries numbered on a list. I'm just going to have you pick a number. Uh, congratulations to Alan and Adno, by the way, for winning the uh, Sekiro giveaway. That was... It was that was it was funny because Matt picked Alan twice because he had two entries, one for audio and one for YouTube. <laughs> I was like, how do you pick the same person twice? <laughs> so uh, so we have uh, 18 entries. So uh, hmm. who who wants to pick the winner? How about we both pick and you average it? Oh, that sounds like a terrible idea. <laughs> uh all right. All right. Ed pick a number. So I am going to go with eleven. Oh jeez. All right. I'm gonna make it easy for you, Corey. I'll go with seven. So that's number nine. Okay. Let's see this list. Hmm. Man, I feel really bad that we keep picking people that we kinda know. But uh, Deshaun is number nine. <laughs> uh, Deshaun Malone. Um, he writes in, uh, my favorite memory is when I got a Super Nintendo for Christmas with Super Mario All-Stars plus World and Yoshi's Island. We didn't have a ton growing up and playing this with my dad was everything. It's why I want Yoshi. So uh, congratulations, Deshaun. You know what? I also have a year of of Nintendo Online 
to to give away as well because we never gave it away in February, so I just kept holding on to it. Okay. So, uh, if you guys want to pick two more numbers, <laughs> I would like to okay. give that to somebody because we never did the February giveaway because we were so busy reorganizing everything. So, uh, okay. So I'm going to go with number four. Six. Four and six. Oh my gosh, why is this not loading? I closed it and now it's not loading. So five. Five. Okay. Ah. Listener Greg Schnabel has won a year of Nintendo Switch Online. Congratulations, Greg. <laughs> he writes in all the time too. Man, I I wanted to do this to get to encourage people to listen to us and we pick we pick people that we know. <laughs> Sort of, or our regulars at least. Well, well, me and, and Egg didn't Greg, have the list, Egg. so it was All right. Yeah. So, congratulations, Greg. You'll and be if, this your year subscription, and probably since we're Facebook friends, you'll probably just be getting it through a Facebook message. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. But thank you, everybody who subscribed and answered. Yeah. Uh. So. I don't know. I haven't really come up for with another giveaway yet. Uh, I don't know if we're going to do another one for April since we're doing one for Nerds Gone Rogue. But check back in May because uh, there'll, be f- there'll be a few games. I am. Um, so uh, what we're going to do for April is I have two twenty dollar eShop cards to give away, uh, and this is how we're going to do it. We're going to have one guy, one girl. Going to make it easy out there. So, subscribe. And we actually want to, I actually want to ask you guys, what is the game of April that you're planning to get with your $20? Game of April. If you win. I want to know what game you're going to get. Well, I think the easy answer now is Cuphead. <laughs> Because it's twenty dollars, <laughs> it's coming but, out in but, April. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to, I want to know what game. Because everybody asks us what game you looking for, and all of this stuff. I want to ask you guys what game for April do you, which you plan to get with your twenty dollars. So follow the rules, like, uh, like we always say. Should uh, they subscribe? Email, subscribe to the YouTube and channel. Send it to our email. Is that how you want to do it, Ed? Yeah, send it to, to the public. Yes. Nintendo Powerblock at gmail.com. Send your subscription and what game you're looking forward to in April. And uh yeah, I guess yes. we'll pick a winner at the end of April. So uh but I think that's gonna do it for this episode of Nintendo Powerblock. Jason, thank you so much for joining us. Thank uh, you, for me. you can find Nintendo Powerblock every Tuesday at 7 a.m. on your podcast service of choice. There's gonna be a couple of quick looks going up this week. Uh one of Hook, uh, one of, of Gris. Uh, there's a couple others that I need to finish as well. But you'll, you'll be checking out some quick looks uh, soon. Also, I'm finishing up the some episodes of our Link to the Past playthrough that we started recording. So uh, that should be fun to be all that by Ed for, what, probably four or five more hours, I would say. So uh, <laughs> anyways, Jason, where can we find you at? Find me on all social media at GimpyJ, including PSN. Two Ys. Two Ys <laughs> at the end. Uh, you can find me on Nerds Gone Platinum live Tuesday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard. Uh, Audio is available on Thursdays. could find Nerds Gone Platinum on Twitter at NG underscore Platinum. You can email at Nerds Gone Platinum at gmail.com. And you should email it with your subscription to Nerds Gone Platinum for a chance to win a copy of Days Gone. Ooh. We are giving away two copies. So just like Pal Block, subscribe to YouTube or your audio podcast of choice. Um, email it to us at the address, and we'll announce the winner on April 23rd. Comes out that Friday. Nice. Nice. Yes. Ed, where can we find you? You guys can find me on Twitter at that Richard Coat. And you can check out my podcast, Option Opinion, on SoundCloud. Uh, the newest episode, E3, How Do You Do?
do uh where i go over some games for 2018 that actually came out from e3 and i give them a rating and you guys can find out what is the top game and what is the lowest game nice and uh, yeah also check out arsenal x on xbox channel and on ngrradio.com yeah uh, you can find me at CorianHD713 on Twitter, CorianHD on Instagram and Twitch. You can also find me on Nerds Gone Rogue and various other content here on the Nerds Gone Rogue platform. You can find all of our podcasts and content on ngrradio.com slash subscribe. All you have to do is find what platform you want to watch or listen to us on, and you can subscribe there. Uh, for Nerds Gone Rogue, we're giving away a copy of Mortal Kombat 11 for April. That is our April giveaway. Uh there's going to be details coming soon on that show as well to, to for for that giveaway. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. You can find Nintendo Power Block on social media at Nintendo underscore P Block on Twitter and Instagram. And you can join our Facebook group, facebook.com slash groups slash Nintendo Power Block. Uh, and I think that's it. So I want to thank everybody so much for watching. And until next time, we love you. Bye, everybody. Woo-hoo. Later. <laughs>